What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here and I have a visitor. He's happy to see me. Um, this is Jessica Jones episode 4 review and wow, um, just <laughs> you know it's the fourth episode and we're finally getting into it. Um, it was kind of interesting though because not completely about Kilgrave. Uh, there's kind of this moment where she gets another job offer from a woman um, asked to check out her husband, find out who he's cheating with, blah blah blah. Um, and so she, obviously because of what happened with uh, the Schlottermans? Schlott Schlotters? I can't remember their names now. Uh, the Hope girl's parents and everything that happened with her, um, the fact that they got referred to her by you know, Kilgrave, she's a little bit hesitant, she's checking out the woman, trying to check her out, trying to find out what's going on, um, tracks her to see because Kilgrave's powers wear off on people after about 10 hours, so she's waiting to see if Kilgrave is going to reapply um, what he says. Um, and follows her, sees that she's bought a gun, she's practicing using it, and when she finally, there's finally a moment where this little girl, like eight, um, confronts her, being mind controlled by Kilgrave, and like just kind of, first of all delivers the, the message that Trish is now safe, she apologizes on her show, and then kind of says, you know, why aren't you... Why aren't you helping this woman? You know, shouldn't you be doing your job? And it was really an intense scene to see this eight-year-old girl just like yelling at her. Um, and it was, yeah, it was it was very very intense. But that kind of, you know, she kind of gets motivated to finish the job. She knows that Audrey is not being controlled by Kilgrave, um, but still hesitant. Follows the husband to this place, this hotel, um, heads upstairs and finds out that the wife is there um, with, Audrey is there with her husband um, and so she op she like opens up the door and Audrey pulls a gun, there's like a plastic mat on the floor and she's like, hurry up honey, get her in the mat. and you're just kind of like, wait, what? Like, so she is being controlled? They find out that she actually is terrified of people with uh, with powers um, because of what happened, you know, in the Avengers, the attack on New York, blah blah blah. Uh, her mother died because of it. She blames the Avengers for what happened, and so she's gonna take out any any gifted person. Which leads to a very intense scene where Jessica just starts throwing all the crap in the in the bedroom, just throws it everywhere. You know, picks up the the little heater, tosses it through a door, breaks a chair, tosses the bed up, and just goes off on her. You know, saying that I've lost people too. I lost my parents in in a hit and run accident. Do you see me tracking down every single driver in New York and killing him? No. You know, I deal with the pain. You have to deal with the pain. It, it was very, it, it was very intense. Um, you could just, you could see how frustrated she was that this woman actually had the nerve to try to kill her because of something she didn't even do. You know, just because she happened to have powers um, that made her guilty. And uh, so, just really well done scene. And it, you know. That, that's pretty much what happens with the woman. Uh, not really sure what else is going to happen as far as... She finds out this information based on uh, the guy that she had to subpoena in, I think, episode 2. No, it was the first episode. She, like, lifted his car up and uh, served him the subpoena. I wonder if anything else is going to happen with this guy. He, he's, it seemed like it was a one-time thing, you know she served him subpoena and he like was claiming she had superhuman abilities and you know, threatened him with her laser eyes blah 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 I'm wondering if that's gonna come back if he's gonna be involved in the story at all later but it doesn't seem like it for now um but 
that that's what happens there. It was an interesting part of the story. Kind of take take a bit away from Kilgrave for a second after we just saw him in the last episode. Have a different storyline going on. Um, you've also got uh, she's very paranoid now, Jessica. She she realizes that somebody's following her. She's not sure who. She realizes that whoever it is taking pictures for Kilgrave. So you see her a bit more paranoid in this one. Every single person who's got a camera around her is like, she's watching them intently. Uh, she's, she's just paranoid to talk to anybody, really. Um, all the people who listened to Trisha's show heard about Kilgrave, heard about him controlling. And, of course, you have several people come in blaming Kilgrave for something they did. Which, you know, it was, it was pretty funny. They were... Jessica was interviewing most of these people, and there were like a couple guys. One, one was just, just some teen, and so, so this Asian guy comes in to this convenience store. He has red glowing eyes, and next thing I knew, I, I knew he wanted me to jack the store. So I pulled out my gun. <laughs> it's just, it, it was it was stupid, but it was kind of funny too. But there are a couple people who came in, um. And some of them it felt kind of weird. One one was a woman, and apparently this man was living with her for two weeks, and all he wanted her to do was just play the cello for him. Another one was like, every time he was with me, he just kept telling me to smile, and I couldn't help myself but smile. Um, and then there's one that for sure, with, as soon as he said it, it was like exactly what Kilgrave has said to his previous victims uh, it's like you want to give me your jacket right and then like an asshole I gave it to him and you know that's Kilgrave just that first of all the the words that were said you want to give me your jacket right it sounds like something Kilgrave would say it sounds like his wording and then the fact that he felt like I, I don't even know why I did it I just gave it to him that's also Kilgrave and then Next, next thing you find out is he he tells Jessica that the guy had a British accent, and that's confirmed. That um, not sure not sure why, um, but also the the lady with the cello and the lady that couldn't stop smiling. Uh, they're also kept in, and it seems like they've got like this little group of group of people together who Jessica believes did have experiences with Kilgrave. Um, and she's calling a support group, but she kind of reveals to uh, Hogarth that it's more she needs to find out what he's planning, and likely some of these people will know. And sure enough, they have a meeting later, and one of the guys talks about how Kilgrave just got into his car and says, you know, you want to drive me around town, right? And so he did, and then he left his son because Kilgrave told him he wanted to leave his son. And ended up getting charged with child abandonment, which is awful. Um, but Jessica finds out that he's he was taking Kilgrave to meet with this guy who was wearing a scarf. Um, and so Jessica now has more information about the guy that was taking pictures of her. Now backtrack a second because what happens at what happens next is based on what happens earlier. Um, the cop from the last episode that tried to kill Trish, but uh, Jessica stopped him, he's back, and he really wants to help, but you can tell Jessica doesn't want help, pe uh, help from people because she knows anybody else who's involved can become a weapon for Kilgrave because that's, you know, it's what he does. Um, and he even says, you know, I've got a whole police precinct behind me that can help you. And Jessica's like, no, no police. And th it makes sense, you know. He, he he could talk to the entire police department, and all of a sudden Jessica becomes fugitive number one. So it does make sense why she doesn't want help from him. But he does end up being useful. Um, she gets, some, like, the traffic cameras from him. And he even goes back to talk to Trish and try to make her feel safe. And they kind of hit it off. Uh, I'm thinking maybe there's a romantic connection in the future there. Uh, but he just he wants her to feel safe. He wants to try to protect her. Um, 
and so that that was that was interesting. It was a nicely done scene where they're just talking to each other on either side of the door before she finally lets him in. But anyway, so once Jessica finds out about the guy that uh, Kilgrave was meeting with for the pictures, she goes back and looks for this scarf that the man described, and finally finds it, and it's Malcolm. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to really enjoy this plot twist because it was it was playing fine right up until the last ten minutes of the episode, and then the internet went all screwy again on me, and so I was more pissed off about the internet than I was focused on the show. I hate that. hate my internet right now. I want to... Okay. Anyway. But it's a nice twist. You know, Malcolm's always seemed like just... I talked about how in the last episode she kind of used him to get the stuff that she needed. Or maybe the second episode, I can't remember now. Um, but he, he kind of seemed like a an outside character. Just this guy who, you know, he's just high all the time. Um, and just happens to be your neighbor. But now he's he's actually got a point to the story. Um... Uh, and I, I, I did wonder if he was going to have any more point to the story, if he was just going to be some guy. There's a lot of questions that this raises, though. Um, and I'm not going to make any predictions, because last time I tried to make a prediction about something, I was horribly wrong, and I don't want to look stupid again, so I'm just going to, I'm going to bring up the questions it raises. One, is he really high all the time, or is this just an act? Two, is he helping Kilgrave, or is Kilgrave controlling him? Three, how long has this been going on? Um, Jessica's obviously known him for a while, so has he been taking pictures for as long as he's known her? Is that why he was made her neighbor uh, for this specific reason? And finally, the woman in the picture with him, I'm guessing it's his mother, does Jessica know her? Um, she saw the picture of them together, and she started tearing up. So I'm wondering if this is maybe another another victim of Jessica's back when Kilgrave was controlling her, um, just like Luke Cage's ex-wife. So, you know, a lot of interesting questions. I mean, I want to know the answers to, and it's <laughs> very well done by the writers of the show, because they they don't answer all the questions. They they answer the question of who's following her. It's Malcolm, but why? You'll have to find out later. But is Kilgrave controlling him? You'll have to find out later. Is he actually that high all the time? You'll have to find out later. Who's the woman? You'll have to find out later. That's the whole point. You know, they want you to watch more. They want you to watch the next episode. They have to. They don't give you all the answers because if they did, you'd be like, oh, okay, well, guess that's it. Um, and not not that you know if they did explain everything in this episode that. I wouldn't want to watch the next one, but it does, it, it makes me want to watch the very next one right now. You know, I don't want to wait to, to find out all the answers. Um, and, you know, it's it's a very, very well written script, um, kind of explaining all of this stuff bit by bit, and uh, it leaves a bit of mystery in there, too. I'm trying to, there, there's two more things I want to talk about. One. Just like I said in the last one, seeing all the pictures of her kind of made her realize how people feel about her. Um, when she takes pictures of them without them even knowing, it's kind of like an intrusion, intrusion of uh, intrusion of privacy, and she's experiencing that now. And it's kind of you know the tables have turned on her. Uh, she once was the <laughs> the follower, now she's being followed. So very interesting sort of change for her there. Um, the other thing is... Hmm. Oh, yeah. The, um, the woman that tried to kill her because of what happened in New York and with her mother and gifted people. Um, first of all, the woman was kind of stupid. Obviously, blaming what happened in New York on the Avengers when Loki was coming with an all-powerful army to rule them anyway. Okay. Um, but also just her dialogue. 
just really confirmed she was an idiot. She was like, you know, why call them, why call them gifted? It's like calling people special. They're not special. They're retarded. You're not gifted. You're a freak. I'm just like, okay, you're not ignorant. You're just stupid. Um, and, you know, of course, it was nice seeing her get her come up its <laughs> where Jessica freaked the hell out of her. Um, no, but it does bring up some interesting questions about Civil War coming up soon. Um, because of everything going on right now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you've got people who want to deal with this alien, anything not human, they want to deal with this threat, they think everything like that is a threat, and then you've got people who see them as guardians, see them as the helpers that they are, the heroes that they are. And I feel like that's kind of where Civil War is leading to. It's not just going to be a division of the Avengers and, you know, Tony Stance versus Cap Stance. It's also going to be a division of people. You know, it's going to be a division of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's going to be a division of civilians, what they think about the superheroes. And seeing that more and more, especially in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., seeing some people who just want to deal with the problem like eradicate the problem because it's alien it's foreign we need to deal with it now and seeing some people who want to kind of help the people help anybody who is gifted help them discover their powers help them hone their powers so they're not you know chaotic um, so yeah very very interesting division there um, and even though I didn't like the woman and thought she was an idiot, it was kind of nice to see that not everybody is, oh, the Avengers are awesome. Uh, because there are going to be people who are scared of that type of power, um, even if it is in the right hands. So a lot of interesting stuff going on, a lot of interesting stuff set up for the next episode. The show is really doing well right now. Um, and, yeah, let me know what you think. See you at the next review. Peace out.